I don't know how they got the story. Yes, well, it's only a matter of time before they get around to me. Oh, I am sorry, but listen, I think I might be onto something. I'm following some leads from way back. For God's sake, Adam, leave it alone. Lee, I really think I can save him. Ever occurred to you he might not be worth saving? You can't mean that. All right, Adam. You want to know about the past? I'll tell you about the past. This was my tree. My own laurel tree. I was up there. Your father was there with Quince. They were eight, maybe they were nine. And they were best friends. They were fighting and kicking and made so much noise Daddy heard and come out to see what all the ruckus was. Go on. Go on. Get home. Quince's father did day work for Daddy. His name was Joe. Daddy never was very handy, you know thing so Joe fixed things for us he made things he, he was here all the time so then Quince came back with his father they fought so hard like animals at one point daddy grabbed the rake and things got out of hand he knocked Joe over Joe fell to the ground and he yelled for Quince to run get his shotgun. Quince, go get my shotgun! Sam told Eddie to go get his. Eddie froze. But Daddy made it go. Joe was here. Daddy was there. Joe waited for his gun. He kept looking around. Sam had his. And then my dear, sweet father. <laughs> this Mississippi early 50s. Daddy said self-defense. He was never even so much as arrested. What were my dad and, and Quince fighting about? A toy soldier. Daddy thought Quince had stolen it. That night he found it under his bed. He took the weight of the world on his shoulder. And then he said, I have killed Joe Lincoln, too. He said if I had cried out for Daddy to stop, no way would he have fired. 
That was your sweet baby girl. Watch it. <laughs> of course, he was right. Well, it's my fault, too. <laughs> <laughs>